Good morning and welcome to the What's Up News Network being broadcast from Panama City Beach, Florida, the home of the world's most beautiful beaches. I am Jim Free with Jim Free Realty. Please help me out this morning and click on the red subscribe button just below the picture. This morning on the condo reports, we had six reports, five new listings, no decreases in price, and no increases in price. We have 488 active units, and 291 of those are guff front. In the five bedroom units, we have no units available. Four bedrooms, we have nine available, five of which are guff front. Three bedroom units, we have 140 and 48 of those are guff front units. In the two bedrooms, we have 163 units available and we have 80 guff front units. In the one bedroom, we have 160 units available, 80 of which are guff front units. And in the studio, we have 16 units available, 13 of which are guff front. Condo units sold during the past 30 days. We had 162 units sold with 103 being guff front. No five bedrooms were sold. We had three four bedroom units and they were all guff front units. We had in the three bedroom units, we had 30 units sold 16 of which were guff front. In the two bedroom units, we had 69, 45 of which were guff front units. And in the one bedroom category, we had 51 units sold, 32 of which were guff front. And then studio, we had nine units sold, seven of which were guff front units. In the detached single family, we have 218 units available, 19 of which are guff front. In the, in the past 30 days, uh, we've had 105 of those units sold, four of which were guff front. In the attached single family, we had 67 units available, eight of which are guff front. In the past 30 days, we've sold 44 of those units, none of which were guff front. Now let's look at the COVID-19 cases. First of all, in the total cases in the state of Florida, we have 671,201. Total deaths, 13,100. Hospitalizations, we had 41,851. The cases seem to have plateaued, the deaths continue to drop, and now let's look at the Bay County data. We have 5,644 residents have tested positive. We've had 88 non-residents that tested positive with 93 deaths, and we've had 333 hospitalizations. The age distribution of cases shows more than new cases in the 25 to 34 age group. The medium age is 42 in, in Bay County. Pediatric cases are still low and the 85 plus age group is the lowest. The Drake breakdown by gender is 2,862 males and 2,829 females. Breakdown by race is 3,212 white 587 black, 765 other, and 1,080 unknown. On the local news scene, we have just experienced uh, Hurricane Sally. It was a category two when it hit, and I think the worst area probably was probably in the Pensacola area. However, even though it was a Category 2 storm, uh, it did cause quite a bit of problems here in Panama City Beach. We had a lot of flooding. We had homes that were invaded by the water. Uh, we had uh, streets that were like lakes. We had 
a lot of beach erosion and uh, this morning when I woke up I thought maybe my wife had bought me a a nice sailboat because right out in front of our residence was about a 35 or 40 foot sailboat that was had run aground so we are uh, we're mopping up from that we we had some issues with uh, power supply our power went out uh, at the office and that's the reason uh, when I was giving you the condo reports I was having to look off camera because some of the things just didn't work quite right when I tried doing the recordings at home and had to uh, then convert it back to what I was using here in the office so we uh, we came out very well uh, we're back pretty much to normal there was some damage to some buildings uh, but very little as far as the wind was concerned but we did have a driving wind we had a lot of rain probably uh, the highest surf that we've had since probably 1994 95 whenever opal came through here and the surf was high i think the surf was even higher this time than it was when we had the Category 5 Michael that came through two years ago. So we're doing quite well in Panama City and we're just praying for those folks over in the other areas, over in uh, Pensacola and Mobile area and those cities north of that that will get an awful lot of rain out of this Hurricane Sally. My uncle Hiram lived on his farm in Booger Holler, Georgia. He had a large pond on the back 40 and was he had properly shaped it for swimming, fixed it up with nice picnic tables, horseshoe courts, and some apple trees and peach trees. One evening Hiram decided to go down to the pond and pick some peaches. He grabbed a five gallon bucket and headed off to the pond. As he neared the pond he heard voices shouting and laughing with glee. As he came closer, he saw it was a bunch of young women skinny dipping in his pond. He made the women aware of his presence and they all went to the deep end. One woman shouted to him, we are not coming out until you leave. Iron frowned, I didn't come down here to watch you ladies swim naked or to make you get out of the pond naked. Holding the bucket up, he said, I'm here to feed the alligators. You just got to love some of these old guys that they can still think fast. In the national news, my advice to the mayors and governors of these troubled cities and states is for them to get out of the way and let their law enforcement agencies handle the problem. The law enforcement agencies are trained to handle mobs and criminals and likely have hundreds, if not thousands, of years of combined experience in handling criminals. The politicians like, likely have no or little experience in how to handle these thugs, so they try to appease them, which never works. I speak from some experience in this area, having served in law enforcement for 37 years. I've been in right situations at least enough to know what works and what doesn't work. And I'm old enough to have witnessed the violence that spread across this country in the 60s. Lately we've heard the terms like socialism, communism, Black Lives Matter, Antifa, fascism, skinheads, alt-right, and other radical groups but probably know very little about them and what that motivates them and who sponsors them. They all have one thing in common and that is to destroy capitalism and this country. Modern terrorism springs from seeds planted in the 1960s with groups like the Black Panthers, the Weathermen, the Ku Klux Klan. These names change but the goal is the same and that is to destroy capitalism, to install socialism in the, our government and to ultimately have the country controlled by communist government. Some of these groups adopt names like Black Lives Matter and corporations, athletes, entertainers, the media all fall over themselves 
to give support and finance to these organizations. Thinking that Black Lives Matter organization actually cares about black lives. Who do you think would support these organizations? How about China, Russia, Cuba, and Iran? Would they support both the right-leaning and the left-leaning organizations? The answer is yes, because they're not interested in helping any of these groups. Their goal is to destroy the family, destroy the church, destroy capitalism, and destroy this country. We know a lot about the goal of the communists because of the life of a young black man named Man Manning Randolph Johnson. Manning was born in Washington, D.C. in 1908. He was raised in a Christian home and was a bright young man, <clears throat> but a bit on the rebel side. Manning was introduced to the Communist Party by a communist bishop in the Episcopal Church, William Montgomery Brown. In 1932, Manning was trained at the National Training School, which was a secret communist training school. Manning was a rising star in the party, and he thought that the goal of the Communist Party was to improve the lives of the blacks in the United States. He soon learned that the only interest that the party had was to pit blacks against whites and whites against blacks. His job was to agitate both sides, to help plant the ten tentacles of Communist Party in the media, Congress, churches, colleges, entertainment, labor unions, and even the Supreme Court of the United States. If someone openly opposed the party, they would label them as racist, bigots, or have them compromised by prostitutes and then blackmail and in some cases murder the opposition. The party made one mistake with Manning. They failed to understand his Christian roots. When the party tried to subvert the black churches, he revolted. Manning said that most of the blacks, especially in the South, could not be converted because they believed the good book and if what the party was trying to sell did not line up with the Bible, it must be from the devil. After surviving nine years in the party, Manning withdrew and spent the remaining years fighting communism and testifying against 18 to 20 top communists in the United States. I invite you to read Manning Johnson's book, Color, Communism, and Common Sense. It will give you a good background in what is happening now. Also, you can look, if you want the short version, look at uh, Wikipedia, or if you want to see his final farewell statement, it's on YouTube, and just go to Manning Johnson final farewell statement, and you will see what he thought of some of the organizations and the Communist Party. We're at a crossroads at this point in our country. We have several people running for office that openly say they're uh, socialist. We have, we have a capitalist running, and we have a choice to make. If you want to continue to have freedom in this country and have the ability to succeed and live the dream in this country, then you need to be aware that the socialists will take that away from us. Socialists will give us bigger government and less freedom. And ultimately, there will be attempts to change this to a communist country. We have an important election coming up in November. It's imperative those who love freedom love the Lord, and want to be able to continually, openly worship together, then they need to make sure that their vote counts. And I urge every Christian to make sure they vote, make sure they share this information with people on their social media sites, 
and get the vote out because that is very important if we want to keep this as a free country. Thank you for watching this video and until we meet again may God bless you and bless this great country that we live in.